Hey, what's going on? This is a songwriting tip, and it's a tip if you ever get stuck or you're in a rut or you're blocked for some reason and you're trying to be creative, you're trying to write a song or just play, you know, play something and you can't, you know, we've all been there before. So this is a classic chord progression that is just something that's pretty easy to, to put into place on the guitar and start having fun melodically and hear a lot of ideas. Whether you use that or not, or it kickstarts something else, that's kind of what it's about. Uh, and I want to say, you know, bass is my main instrument and I, I do mostly bass stuff on this channel, but I, I play a lot of guitar because I love to songwrite. And I songwrite with guitar because when you add guitar and the bass together, there's nothing like that. I suppose you can write a song on bass. Of course you can. The root. When you put them together, like I said, it's when it gets really interesting. So anyways, here is my tip. And the songwriting tip is a descending chord structure. Okay, now it does. It can be major or minor, but the bottom line is just that it's it's a classic progression that everybody has used from the Beatles to Green Day, and I'm pretty sure. And uh, it's just an incredible, melodic, fun thing to play. There's going to be seven things I want to talk about in this, and the first one is basically you start on the tonic and you drop a half. That's it. That's how you get started. That's generally the rule. Let's say you're in G, G major. So there you go. That's kind of fun, right? Or C. I mean, it just sparks a lot of melodic, creative ideas, I think, in me, and it will in you, too, if you just start playing this. It's, it's just been done for so long, and there's, I don't know why it works, it just does, so don't question it. Okay, so the first step was, you start on a tonic, and you just drop it a half step, and you go from there. Now, point number two is keep the tonic on the second chord. So basically, just drop the bass on the second move. Let's say you're in D major. I'm going to keep D, but just drop the bass. That sounds great. Let's keep the D also. Let's go to B would be next. I'm keeping uh, the tonic through the whole time here. It just goes on and on. So that's what you don't have to keep the tonic through the entire progression, but it's, it's an idea to keep it. Let's say right here, like I'm going to keep it in C just drop to the B. See that? And then start changing A minor to G major to F, you know, on and on. So that's number two, is keep the tonic when you move to the second note. Number three is vary the time. Now, what that means is, let's say we want to stay longer on one chord, and that's up to you, but that, that can create you know, just to have it not sound the same so much, just go, let's see. Now let's do it quicker to start with. So there you go, on G and F sharp, I was quick and then E I waited and then C and B I was quick and then I waited on A minor. And that kind of can just mix it up and make it interesting and different. All right, so number four about this descending chord structure is vary the distance. Like I said to vary the time, you can vary the distance. You don't have to keep dropping, you know, from here to here to here to here to here. To here. You know, you know the, the, the way that sounds good all the way down. Let's say you're going from here, C to B, then you can jump all the way down to G to F sharp. So there you go. You can vary the time, you can vary the distance in between the chords. So that was number four. Now the fifth point about the descending chord structure is make it loop. 
You don't want to go on too far, keep falling forever and ever and ever. You definitely want to have it sound like it has a loop. It has a beginning, kind of a middle and an end, and it starts again. The reason for that is, I think so you can preserve like moments where the singer is really going to hear what he's going to do there, whether it's you or someone else. If you keep going, there's no, there's no feeling of it starting again and where you'll land on the one. So definitely make it loop and leave, leave the opportunity for the vocals and the lyrics to really sit somewhere and, and, and come up with something great. So that's number five. This, the sixth point about the descending chord structure is there's no theory. Just make it sound good to you. Now that means whether or not you, whatever you want to do with the chords and the structure and the time and the distance, just vary it. Who cares? It doesn't really matter. Descending chord structure, no rules, just make it sound cool. You, you, you can move the bass, don't move the bass, you can move every chord. Um, just have fun with it and make it sound good to you because the only thing that matters is the sound of your ears, that's it. The point number seven is a little bit similar to the last one, no theory, sound. This is just, there's no rules, so cheat. It's a little different because what I mean is make a chord go up once, doesn't matter. You, you know, it's still essentially a descending chord structure. So let's say you're in D major like we were. I want to go up on the second time. In fact, I want to stay on B. what I meant I wanted to stay on B that kind of felt good and then it feels like you'd go to a good change for a B part in the song all right so that's it that's my songwriting tip for the day it's uh, use a descending chord structure with all the points I said let's recap hey man I'm not ashamed that I prepare for these videos here we are right here look at this there's your tips let's let's, let's recap boom there we go all right thanks for watching see you next time Yeah, I'm good. Can't see shit. It's okay. Hey, how's it going? Thank you for stopping by. My name is Murphy Cargus, and this is my channel. Hey, what's going on? This is a songwriting tip for you. If you want to write songs out there, or you just are. Hey, what's up? It's a songwriting tip. <laughs>